Hey, how's everybody doing? Hope you're doing great. Wanted to do a video today to try and show some of the fellow musicians out there about how to do a stereo recording with a line out from your stereo mixing board into your DSLR camera so it actually sounds really good. So you get a nice representation of how your band or how your instruments sound or how your performances sound uh, without just using, you know, the microphone off the camera. I'm good. Some of you have probably tried to use uh, cell phones to do uh, demo videos, and that can work okay, but keep in mind, that's usually in mono, not stereo. You probably want a stereo recording uh, of, your, uh, of your production, of your band, of your, uh, your performance. So I'm going to give you a couple of quick demonstrations here uh, of what I'm talking about, and, you can, and can, you'll be able to see the difference. Okay, so that little guitar demonstration was coming out of the right side of your speaker or the right side of your headphone, depending on which way you're listening to. This next guitar is going to be coming out of the left side, so you can see uh, that you've got two different sides of the stereo spectrum, and then I'll show you how uh, to do that. Okay, so how did we do that? Well, we took the guitar, we plugged it into a stereo mixer and plugged that right into the camera. The cabinet behind me is mic'd and I've also plugged that into the mixer and panned that to the right. So you have the electric guitar in the right side, the acoustic in the left. How do we do that? And I'm gonna show you how you do that. Okay, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to go into the menu of your camera. You need to go into the audio setting you need to select the audio setting from auto to manual. And so that's your gain setting. You wanna turn the gain input all the way down to one, not zero or two or five, all the way down to one. In most cameras, that's the first click after zero. And what that does is that turns the input uh, on the camera right down. Why? Because the input on your camera is mic level. The output on your mixing board, of course, is line level. Some of you audio engineer mixing type guys will know the difference, but if you're not familiar, the line level is very, very hot signal. The microphone input level is sort of a uh, sensitive signal and it'll, it'll burn it and it'll distort. You don't want that. You're going to need a quarter inch stereo cable coming out of your headphone jack. You need to get that into your camera's microphone input. And so you're gonna probably need either a quarter inch to one eighth of an inch stereo cable or you get a stereo quarter inch to quarter inch cable and then just put uh, an adapter on the end of it. Also has to be a stereo adapter. You're gonna plug that into your camera. You're gonna to wanna to put microphones uh, in front of your cabinets, in front of your drums. Uh, maybe you take a line out from your bass amp if you like. You're gonna to wanna to put, of course, uh, microphones in front of your singers, it goes without saying. But keep in mind, those microphones are also gonna pick up whatever's going on behind the singer. So if there are only one microphone for the singer, then it's gonna pick up things in the background. If you've got three and four microphones going on, that's gonna pick up things behind you. So keep that in mind. Okay, this next part's really important. You want to control Control the recording level inside your camera with the headphone level control on the mixer. So now that you've got that going on, you can essentially just mix your band, your uh, guitars, your bass, your singer, everything else can go through your stereo mixing board, mix it the way that you want to hear it in a recording. And then run that, of course, into your camera and then go ahead and, and do some test records of your band. You're going to have to do some experimenting with this, of course, because it's not multi-track. You can't fix the levels later. And don't forget, the way it sounds on the recording is going to be probably quite a bit sometimes differently than the way it's going to sound in the room. Now you might be thinking, well, why don't we just do this at our next gig? Just run the headphone jack off the mixing board into our uh, our camera. That probably isn't going to produce very uh, optimal results because the mix that you would have in a room for an audience, live audience, is going to probably be different, uh, in some cases vastly different, than the uh, program recording audio that a, a listener is going to want to hear on the headphones or speakers. There, there will be different things. Uh, the drums and the bass probably won't come through very well because usually in a room that's fairly audible. You'll There'll be way too much uh, vocalist in your live uh, gig mix. Uh, so when you're doing your... Um, 
demo recording, video recording, you probably want to do it in a rehearsal space where you can stop and change levels and fix things. Okay, so do a couple of test records. I would suggest then taking your little SD card out of your camera and play back a couple times, listen with headphones, and make sure the mix is the way you want it because you're going to find that things may not quite be the way you want them and you've got to turn things up or down or tweak them a little bit. I'm going to reiterate again, you want to control the recording level inside your camera with your headphone level control. The next thing you want to probably do is make sure you've got some decent lighting going on. Cameras love light. And if you're using the lens that came with your camera, it's probably a kit lens or what's known as a kit lens. And they're okay lenses, but they don't usually let in a whole lot of light. So you're going to have to really use a fair bit of light if you can. What I've got going on here is an actual 500 watt construction light. You get those at any sort of uh, hardware type store. Uh, and I've got a white sheet set up in front of it. Why? Because the white sheet helps diffuse and soften the light so you don't have this harsh, blasting, you know, contrasting spotlight type look. If you've ever driven by a film set or have ever watched those kind of behind the scene type shows, you'll often see they have lots and lots of lights set up all over the place uh, to, to, to brighten up the scene and to create mood. And what you want to do is just make sure you've got enough illumination so that, you know, the audience can see your band. You don't really want to use overhead uh, lights in the room because it'll look like this. Another option, of course, is to do this, believe it or not, in a living room uh, on a bright sunny day so that you're actually facing uh, the window. Open up all the curtains, uh, set up all the equipment. I know it's a lot, a bit of a pain, but it's worth doing if you want to have a good quality production uh, video for your band uh, as a good demonstration of what you can do. While you've got everything all set up, you might as well record five and six and seven, eight, 10, 12 songs uh, just so you've got it. Stop the camera each time in between each song because later for, for some of the editing, you'll need to have uh, an individual file for each song. So once you're happy with the visual quality and the audio quality of your recording, then you can take that, uh, import that into your computer and start having a look at what you've got. The next thing you're going to probably want to do is called trim the top and tail, meaning you want the uh, the intro part where you know you're setting up and putting your guitars on. And so go ahead and trim that out by using this trim tool. So you see that sliding there, and then at the end. You know, there's no point having all this extra stuff at the end. So go ahead and trim the tail or the end of it. And then you're going to want to save that as a copy or it's known as export that and go ahead and name it as something, name it as whatever the song is called so that you'll, when you go back to this later, you'll know what you've got. And so I hope that works for you. Make sure you charge up your batteries before you start. Uh, my last sort of word of wisdom and make sure that you clean off your recording media. If you're, so if you're using little SD cards, you know, make sure you don't erase your cousin's wedding from, from three years ago, uh, transfer that over and back it up somewhere and then clean your card off, format your card. Video takes up a lot of space. Uh, it also uses a lot of uh, battery uh, juice. So make sure your batteries are juiced up. If you have the AC cable, uh, or if you have a way of plugging your camera in, I would suggest going that route. Hope it works for you. Post the links to your uh, uh, band videos here and let's all have a good look and see how they turned out. Down around the car, a half a mile from here, I see the 